Hello, I'm Jonathan from Boredom Sated. I'm Michael from Boredom Sated. I'm, John I'm Boris from Boredom Sated. I'm Boris from Boredom Say that I'm John. Who talks over John? Yeah. <laughs> we have a chorus so, here. <laughs> so what's what we're talking about today is because the Pathfinder 2 playtest came out recently, and one of the main concepts in it is bringing in the gunslinger. And the gunslinger brings, of course, in the idea of playing with guns. Guns in D&D is a, an interesting concept that a lot of people agree with and a lot of people disagree with. Time frames power levels, all that kind of fun stuff, rule sets. This is what we have to discuss, and all of us have slightly, at least slightly differing opinions, possibly going all the way to completely differing opinions on this topic, which is the <laughs> reason why we wanted to do this video. I, I think it's a good thing we're doing this over video, because this might come to blows. Sean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. you start off. You have a very strong opinion on this. I what do, do you have about a very guns strong in opinion. fantasy settings. <laughs> yes, I do not believe guns are appropriate for a sword and sorcery fantasy setting. Obviously, they're appropriate for a pirate or a western. Uh, but if you're doing Dungeons and Dragons, you think sword and sorcery. It's like, why are you bringing any type of guns, even black powder, into the equation? Now, I know, yes, they have pirates and stuff like that. But you could keep them to the swords and, and you know, scimitars and other such things. Um, but don't put that in sword and, sword and uh, sorcery. Now, there are different worlds that have this, specifically like the Warcraft world, where they have all types of mechanical things. And in the sword and sorcery, you do have the Iron Golem, which is also, uh, you know, kind of a mechanical thing in a way. Um, and of course, the level of technology, you should be able to create a gun, even at a revolver level. Um, but is it appropriate? It just doesn't feel like it fits the sword and sorcery. You got magic, you have wands. Why do you need a gun? Um, a magic oh. gun, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> now, I am I'm a big gun fan, but not in sword and sorcery. So if you tell me something else, yeah, put the guns in. But if you do sword and sorcery, it just doesn't belong. You're a purist, I get it. <laughs> that, that's true. It's a, it's a purist type thing for the sword and sorcery world. It just doesn't feel right to be in there. But if you're going to put it in, I'm going to play it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? When you're going to play, all right. <laughs> Wait, does that mean we found a way to make it so you're not going to play a wizard? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Just wait. Oh, okay. As soon as they have an archetype with uh, arcane to add magic to it, he'll play to the gunslinger. <laughs> No, I'll, I'll play. I'll play a, a wizard slash gunslinger. There you go. Like I said. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, Mike, what are your opinions? All right. Um, partially agree with him. Um, if you're like playing a, a, 50, a 16th century pirate campaign, guns are a must. Muskets are part of it. Cannons, doing the whole broadside things, it's very exciting. As far as going a little more medieval, um, I think. If you have an alchemist, there's always a chance to make uh, gunpowder, and that always adds a little something special to and dangerous as well. Um, but if you're going to allow something like the like the monk in, the monk class as it's based is basically the kung fu uh, kung fu theater um, Shaw's brothers uh, master killer um, thirty six chambers monk from. Uh, Eastern mythology. It shouldn't be in the Western-centric um, Dungeons and Dragons. It just shouldn't. It doesn't belong. It's the wrong, it's the wrong place. But if you are going to allow that, then firearms. Assuming you add, if you make sure that all the um, baggage that comes around with firearms, uh, like the reload times, like the fact that gunpowder can be spoiled by any bit of moisture, raining, forget about it. You're screwed. Underwater, obviously ruined. These things are not only balancing, but they just simply add a level of... Um, it makes the class unique. Otherwise, why bother with a gunslinger? We can just simply use a, <clears throat> excuse me, an archer for ranged combat. But the gunslinger does, as the class is, as I've looked at the Pathfinder um, playtested version for second edition, is interesting. It is... Uh, its feats are anime-esque it's something that would be actually fun to play and ultimately it's up to the dungeon master if he allows it in i don't see a problem with it of course 
So, yeah. So, uh, Mike, how else is the monk supposed to <laughs> test his toad technique to see if the bullet would penetrate the flesh? You need to have both items in the same game to be to so the monk can make sure that his toe toe technique is at its premium. <laughs> what? So, <laughs> what that? Toe technique from Five Deadly Venoms. <laughs> I feel like I've had a different, you, had a, you completed a different co uh, conversation. <laughs> <You haven't had. laughs> no, I'm just talking about the monk. Uh, I understand. Uh, so, I'm just joshing. And yeah, yes, no. If, no, if so in, one in one my one. view, yeah, in in my view, um, I think it really uh, sort of, uh, uh, I, I'm agreeing a little bit more with uh, Mike. It's the DM sets the setting. If the DM sets the setting to be, you know, um, you know, Renaissance, uh, you know, type of fantasy swashbuckler you know musketeers then yes guns are appropriate um if it's if it's not then he doesn't put guns in and it's all based on the storyteller so i am i don't think guns are overpowered the way they're set up in most uh fantasy system i've never seen a we'll very that, overpowering then. gun right right uh, in a it's, right now we're just talking about appropriate right so uh so based on the the fantasy aspect of it it's depending on uh, where the gm is um sword and sorcery could be viable if they're doing sword and sorcery renaissance or enlightenment age or sword and sorcery you know high seas piracy uh so I'm uh, whatever the GM setting is and how he sees the world. I, I think is the uh, sets the appropriateness of the gun for the campaign. So um, yeah, I'm closer on that end as well. Uh, yes, I agree that in a it, it depends on the time frame of the of the campaign. Now we are specifically talking about this because Pathfinder Two uh, brought it in. Pathfinder 2 definitely takes place in a pirate world. It takes place where guns are around, but rare. They're hard to find, they're expensive, they're difficult to work with. I think that's appropriate because, again, it's supposed to be taking place in a 17th century style time. In the 17th century, you had a lot of guns. You didn't have as many bows. The thing is that bows and guns have take a completely different skill set. Bows and guns take a completely have, have completely different uses. They're going to work differently, and the one problem that we've generally always had is, is a gun better than a bow, depending on what scenario you use? In the general, bows have a much longer range and all that kind of stuff, but we'll get into the technicalities in a few minutes. Right now, again, we're just talking about if it's appropriate. In the Pathfinder 2 base setting, it takes place in a time when guns are absolutely appropriate. Because in the real world, in the 17th century, you had plenty of people using guns, and in fact, did you really have a lot of people using bows? No, you really didn't. Unless you were going for mass production and things like that. But even then, you still didn't see as many bows as you did crossbows and things like that. Because again, simpler to use. But if you're going with a true medieval style game, you're going with the Robin Hood. You're going with like what you think of as true sword and sorcery, which is Arthurian or Robin Hood or even ancient, then obviously you're not going to be using guns because that doesn't make any sense. However, as soon as you put it in your setting in the 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th century, guns are not only appropriate, but you really need to make sure that you, like, if you're going to have a pirate campaign and not put in gunpowder, it just feels weird. I've played games like that where it's like, all right, we're on the high seas and the giant uh, galley has a huge crossbow on its back on, on like on the bow and it shoots a giant, like a giant ballista. And it's like, <laughs> so there's lots of like, it, 
the balance aspect for cannons and gunpowder and things like that is definitely a difficult thing to work with. But if you're going to play a game with, that plays in that time frame in the 16th or 17th century, which is still going to have plenty of magic involved, it's still going to have plenty of the other stuff involved, and it makes Alchemist a much more reasonable character to play, you have to include the guns. So I think overall we all agree in general it's based on the time frame. It's just John thinks that the time frame, if you're playing sword and sorcery, it shouldn't be 16th or 17th century. Right. And we all obviously are disagreeing with that because we're saying that it's <laughs> on the game time and all of that. So right. that goes over what the – or should guns be there? Now, let's talk a little bit about rule systems because um, there are several rule systems. Many rule systems have implemented guns. We're going to talk about the ones that are at least relatively recent um, that are easy to access – we're going to start by talking about the 5th edition ones. We're going to talk about the Pathfinder 2 ones. And I also want to bring in the Pathfinder 1 rules because the Pathfinder 1 rules also kind of go along with that 3.5 setting. And there are a lot of people who still don't like the newer games and would still play that one instead. So um, to go over the new rules, the Pathfinder 2 rules, um, all guns have a misfire chance, but the misfire chance is based on keeping your gun clean. If you took an hour in a day after they were used, then the gun is clean enough and you don't have to worry about misfires until the following day again. So basically, while your wizard is prepping their spells and your cleric is praying for theirs, you clean your gun. Not that huge a deal. Um, there are now there are abilities to make it so that you can misfire other than that, but you don't misfire on a one, which is how the rules will work for the other systems we're going to talk about. The other thing is that it is an action to reload every time. Now, you only have three actions per round, so spending one action just to reload is definitely detrimental. So what makes using a gun worthwhile? Well, the Pathfinder 2 rules, the main reason to use a gun is because the gunslinger is a very good class. And guns are better than crossbows. But the way bows work, would you really want to use a gun over a bow? In this system right now, as it's written... I think the answer is no. Now, the fatal rule uh, is on every gun, and that makes it so it changes from a D4 or a D6, goes up two die categories to a D8 or a D10. So the best gun in the playtest rule is the dueling pistols, which is a D6 damage, and the fatal makes it up to a D10. So that's neat, but is it overpowering? I don't think so. What do you guys think of the Pathfinder 2 rules? Well, I think I one, of the, think one of the issue, the issue are that you can reload in one action, which is like three seconds, which is not very realistic for a black powder gun that's front-loaded. It's just not there. Now, if you were talking about a revolver with, with, a, with a speed loader, absolutely. You can do it in under one second. Um, but, but with a black powder, that's just like it should take like three rounds but of course if you're sitting there not doing anything and everybody's getting their their butts kicked it doesn't feel right uh, and you better not miss or miss fire <laughs> if you do Must. when you do shoot so yeah. they have to make it more playable and yeah. so they come up with the you know one action in, in each round but that still sounds like it's it, it's far-fetched for real for, well, what, what you don't realize is that is that the gunslinger is actually a time magician and he's speeding up things. That's how he's able to do it. What we you need is an Eldritch Gunslinger. That's, That's what we need. <laughs> so, other than the fact that the reload time is not is too fast, do you have any other issues with the rules? Not so far. I mean, it looks like it's actually pretty uh, fun to play out, outside of that, you know, reloading well, business. Outside of the thing that makes it so that it's playable, it's fun to play? Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, my, it is. It is. It def I, I definitely would like to play test the heck out of it. Um, certainly, if we could like uh, do like several different gunslingers in a single game, uh, each with a different path to see how they play, that's the probably the most efficient and fast way to do it. Uh, whenever uh, a gunslinger feat of a specific way or path uh, comes up, we take it just because, just to see how it all builds up. 
Um, but as far as the rules for firearms, um, looking at the damage and uh, the ranges and such, and the that whole fatal thing, um, I think it would be. I think it it works well. Um, I'm not really sure about the modular part. There's uh, one of the weapons is called a hand cannon, and um, it's a simple, uncommon, simple weapon, and it has a modular ability, which basically means it can switch the type of damage. Um, it's basically what versatile is for uh, a sword. Where a sword you can you either do piercing or slashing damage, and of course that's important because certain creatures have damage reduction against one of those, uh, and not the other. And this one modular allows you to somehow basically transform the gun in some way, and it can shoot bla uh, piercing or so slashing or whatever else. Way so that that's works. really interesting. How to think of so it? The, 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 the reason why it does that is because the hand cannon does explain that it's based on the fact that it can th shoot anything. So it's based on what you load it with. So ah. if you load it with, uh, basically, it, it's uh, it's a gun that just shoots whatever you put in it. it, it yeah. So if you want if you want piercing loaded with a lot of your forks and your grandma's <laughs> silverware. <laughs> <laughs> In, in modern yeah, terms, if you want, if if you want blood, blood, pick up a few rocks. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want slashing, and get the razor blades out. <laughs> in modern terms, it's it's like a shotgun. You can have a 12 gauge buckshot, or you can have a slug. So, yeah, so, well, do you remember, that. Yeah. all of the guns here are definitely pre 19th century. Right. Oh, yes. Right. Um,. Boris, your thoughts on the Pathfinder 2 gun rules? I think they're uh, they're uh, they're very in line. They they're very simple. They make it a playable class, and uh, definitely in the top three uh, gun rules uh, uh, I've seen so uh, in my history with uh, fantasy. High sorcery guns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're not going to obviously go into all of those sets of rules, but I do want to go into the other current sets of rules for this. So one of the other current sets of rules, obviously, would be the D&D 5th Edition rules. So the D&D 5th Edition rules um, have a few sets of guns. Uh, so the way they work is you can take an, you have to take an action to reload. However... You only have to reload based on how many – you reload what based on how many shots the, the item can take. So as an example, if a, an item has a reload value of four, the pistol has a reload by a value of four, you can fire four times before you have to reload. Um, so the damage for generally for these is quite high uh, because the crit is not something they think about. So a pistol's basic one is D10. So, I mean, that is the basic pit thing that we would think of. The basic damage is D10. Uh, it uses the standard rules for 5th um, for edition, so you would still add your dexterity to your attack. Um, and the other thing that, of course, all of these have is misfire. On a natural one, or a misfire of the number you roll or lower, a pistol has a misfire of one, um, the uh, item breaks. Uh, it can not be used again until you spend an action to try to repair it. To repair it, you have to make a successful Tinkerer's Tools check, which is a DC equal to 8 plus the misfire score. If your check fails, the weapon remains broken and must be mended out of combat at a quarter of the cost of the firearm. Creatures who use a firearm without being proficient have a misfire score added by 1. Uh, now, a musket has a misfire of 2, and it, a blunderbuss has a misfire of 2. A hand mortar has a misfire of three, but the hand mortar also has a 2d8 base damage roll. Um, Blunderbuss is 2d8 piercing. It, there's some fun stuff in here for the gun rules. Hmm. <coughs> they are so expensive the as hell, though. They are very expensive comparatively, and the higher level firearms can only be crafted. A pistol is 150 gold pieces, which is, by the way, as, as expensive as most common or most high-end common magic items. A musket is 300 gold pieces. A blunderbuss is 300 gold pieces. So, and a pepper box is a, is, I don't understand why a pepper box is as good as it is here, but, you know, whatever it is, whatever. So, that's the general D&D &D rules, which is they have a misfire, but it only happens on a one. They don't do especially more or less damage than a bow does. They do about the same. 
They do have that ability to reload uh, to to fire multiple times before having to reload. They've got reasonable range, but again, why would you use a pistol instead of using a bow? There's no misfire chance on a bow. You don't have to ever spend an action to reload the bow, the, the bow. And the damage is a D8 instead of a D10. So I don't understand why they would put in these pistol rules and not have some sort of additional advantage to using the firearms. Hmm. What do you guys think? The ammunition well, also is... is it's half of anything is obviously, the, obviously the, what the ammunition is uh, or how much it costs. Uh, the pistol's four gold pieces for, I believe, 20 shot. And yeah. the musket is five gold pieces for 20 shot. Um, so, yeah, yeah so, the other problem with with yeah. all of that is you'll go broke killing your opponent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ammo is very expensive. In all you these get a dagger, steps. and after every battle... Yeah, you're gutting the enemy and like, hold on, oh, hold on, guys. <laughs> you spent like 20, 30 minutes <laughs> covering every single one of your bullets. Like, I got this one. <laughs> got five solar pieces, five. <laughs> I, I think it would be ch cheaper to kill the enemy with the dagger and leave the dagger in the enemy than to use those shots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very expensive to, to for all that ammo, no matter where you're going from. Yeah. So is your only problem with the system's gun rules that the ammo is too expensive? No, no, I, I, no, I, I agree that having that misfire chance and, and then having to fix your gun afterwards, if it's really a fumble, <coughs> really takes away from the significant uh, benefit of the damage. Because 2D8 just... is better than any of the bow would do. So, I think the, mis you know, the misfire number... The... Go ahead, yeah. Simon. No, no. So uh, I th I think the da the extra damage that you do is totally nullified by the chance of breaking and the uh, and the extra cost of all the bullets and all of that that you're pretty much throwing away every time you use it. Hmm. I think the misfire chance is actually you have to kill dragons to make it worthwhile <laughs> with all the. I think the, mis I think the misfire is actually kind of low in consider considering. Um, how absolutely unreliable these things were back in the day. I mean, if you had a, like a, a for instance, a fog, a fog is a lot of just pure moisture, it's water vapor, one thing else. That would ruin your day. The little bit of that will screw up your powder like nothing. Any little moisture will mess up your powder. And plus they weren't reliable. Depends on, again, depends upon the time period. Obviously the closer you are to the 19th century, the better they are in general. But if you're going to pirate, uh, pirate area, Oh, sorry, a couple hundred years before that, around the 16th century, whatever it is, thereabouts, or well, heaven help you if you go towards the matchlocks, not even the flintlocks, the matchlocks are terrible. I mean, you're literally carrying yep. mountains of powder on you while keeping a live wick going. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it can be really rough. Um, <laughs> but other than that, it's, it's, a rather simplified, it's rather simplified. And it's, yeah. it works. I'm sure it works. Um, damage is about, uh, Remember, yeah, uh, they don't have D and D fifth edition doesn't multiply the uh, the damage uh, the same way that the Pathfinder does. Like Pathfinder, generally when the, when the highest levels with weapons, you're doing four dice of damage, and whereas D and D, other than you, whatever the damage it is, I don't know. If, I assume there's magic pistols as well to make it competitive with regular weapons. Um, they might be adding elemental damage to this in addition to the bullet, but. Um, uh, even though it, they do more damage, uh, it's only one dice. You know, it's like it's it's so it's uh, it seems fe uh, relatively feasible. A little bit more, a little bit uh, more streamlined or simpler, I would say. Um, and of course, there are different uh, weapons here. They don't have the the hand cannon, uh, <laughs> and they don't seem to have um, uh, the blunderbuss. In the other one, it has a scatter effect. That's the shotgun for. Uh, Pathfinder, whereas right. this one just simply, um, it just does more damage. It just seems to do more at a very range, short range. range. Yeah, because the blunderbuss rule for uh, Pathfinder two is very nice because it also does splash damage to whoever it's in the range. So it's pretty, 15 feet, but heck, you're doing damage plus the splash damage. It's like okay, bad. <laughs> yep, John. So. so so uh, yeah, in D and um, D, it seems like they just you know kind of put some of the rules in there to even give you uh, 
advanced weapons like alien weapons in the in the in the Green Master's Guide. So I was like, okay, <laughs> they wanted to be able to, so you can put it into any setting of any kind, even modern, and be able to uh, to play the D and D rules. Uh, but they, there's really D and D doesn't have that much advantage using firearms versus the bow or a crossbow. And that's probably what you should default to in, in D&D unless they come out with uh, newer rules for the regular, uh, for the regular like Forgotten Realms world. In general, in Forgotten Realms, I don't remember reading in any Forgotten Realms people having guns. So I've read uh, that, uh, like there's some specific... Like city. Right, yeah, there are a couple of specific people and specific cities that have guns, but they are very rare and they are very, very powerful. Um, which sense. these rules do not follow because there's nothing again I'm, I don't want to upgrade a d8 to a d10 just so that I can have a chance to misfire and have a shorter range and yeah. have to reload every once in a while like, it, it just seems like <laughs> you're lot. doing this much more damage for a couple of possible things that actually just legitimately hurt you for no particular reason the bow's main advantage is speed as well yeah. as uh, yeah. ra- the general I, range. I would bet you can the, fire every round, every every single attack. I would bet the yeah. official throughput probably is less than than bows and arrows. But again, these are also the ones that I have at least listed are the basic firearms, and they are definitely on the lower end and the lower technology scale. It even mentions it in the playthrough that this off, some of the weapons are first level. Even says first level, so that would indicate that there might be higher level, more advanced arms um, when the actual book comes out, the gears and um, yeah. gun comes out. Remember, the only uh, the only items that are higher level in the base books are things like plate armor, which is level two. So assume they might put in a couple more, maybe a few more advanced weapons, but don't expect too much. Hmm. All right. Uh, finally, what I wanted to discuss rule wise was the Pathfinder one gun rules. Because the Pathfinder 1 gun rules have a couple of extra rules to them, but they really capsulate, in my opinion, what a gun rules should look like. So the gun rules for Pathfinder 1, uh, first of all, you have to realize that they still have something called a touch armor class. A touch armor class does not involve any of your armor bonus. It just basically involves your dexterity modifiers and anything else that you can have to your bonus that don't involve just having a thick hide. So your touch AC is generally much lower than your regular AC. Um, So the uh, firearms in Pathfinder 1 are separated into early firearms and advanced firearms. The early firearms are the things we've generally been talking about. Uh, Pepper box, buckler gun, pistols, blunderbuss, things like that. Now the rules for those are, if you hit someone in your first range increment, then you do you go against touch ac which means that the damage on these is not especially high but you don't have to have the skill to hit because you can hit almost anybody because they can't guard against a bullet armor doesn't affect it as well as it does against arrows and things like that the other thing is that uh like with what pathfinder 2 tried to do was would make the crits more powerful all guns on the firearms table, especially the uh, all guns, have either a times three or times four critical value. So a times four critical value means that you multiply your crit by four instead of by one when you're shooting with a gun. Now, uh, guns in this game do not add a stat to them, just like in Pathfinder 2, they do not add a stat. So you can get bows that add your strength modifier. So bows might do more damage. But bows are going to have a times three critical, not a times four. Um, also, again, in the short range, these guns are going to hit very easily, whereas bows are not. When you get to advanced firearms, if you shoot with a rifle, you, advanced firearms, instead of having your first range increment where you hit touch AC, it's your first five range increments where you hit at touch AC. So if you fire a rifle, your touch, your range on that first range increment is 80 feet. So if you shoot it up to 400 feet, you're going against touch AC with a D10 gun. 
which means you're now doing more damage than a, than a, a uh, you're doing more damage than an average um, uh, a bow does. You've got a times four critical, and you're hitting much much easier than you would be otherwise. Now, uh, the misfire rules are very similar to the path to the fifth, fifth edition misfire rules, which is if you roll that number or lower on your attack roll, then it misfires and you need to take some time to clear it. I believe in this, you just have to take a single action to clear it. Um, now, if you have a one or two uh, handed weapon, your reload time is still going to be kind of uh, uh, inaccurate. It's very short. Um, to load a the early firearms, uh, it is a single action to reload any of these things. However, um, you it's actually if for any, any of the one or two handed ones, it's not even a full action. It's a move action to reload your gun, and you can take um, uh, you can take a feat to speed it up to make it so it's a free action to reload. Uh, advanced weapons, same thing. Now, if you're using a two-handed weapon, it's a little bit slower, but overall, you can still pretty easily reload, and it makes it so that guns are very viable, and especially advanced guns, are definitely more powerful than bows and crossbows. Uh, however, they are extremely expensive. <laughs> Ammo is still extremely expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you also still have to worry about the fact that um, uh, you still have to worry about the fact that it's hard to get this stuff. Black powder, uh, if you're using a black powder gun, cannot be used underwater. If it's exposed to water, it's screwed. You know, all of that kind of fun stuff is still there. Um, now, personally, obviously, I believe that the firearms rules from Pathfinder 1 are actually very good. Uh, because the the obvious only problem with them comes from the fact that uh, reloading, again, is very fast, but it's a fantasy game. You're supposed to be very, very good. So, uh, yeah, based, up, yeah. based upon that, I, I would definitely agree with you that uh, um, uh, uh, the order out of those three games, I mean, I know other games where I think firearm rules are in line but the order is definitely pathfinder one pathfinder two and then the fifth edition for the best rules uh for firearms i agree the i like the fact that um that there is a touch ac which actually brings a uh really a touch of realism when a, when a bullet is not uh, most armors uh, of the day were not super effective against um a bullet um and um i mean obviously the costs of these things are prohibitive but that's i think more to factor in how rare they are and how exotic the materials are and how specialized the tools of that time period have to be um and um i like the the times for critical because if if something uh comparative to say for instance um a melee weapon um if um if uh, you get uh, a grazing wound with a with a with a pistol, okay, it's just a flesh wound or it's just a graze. It doesn't do, it doesn't do more than a scratch or a little bit of blood in comparison to a grazing wound with, say, for instance, an axe, which could sometimes be uh, just really dirty and you might die from tetanus or an infection uh, at the time period. And obviously, armor is more effective against an axe than it is um, a gun. It just simply is. Um, you can certainly cause broken bones, whatever it is, if you hit the right spot. But um, armor was just simply more uh, effective against the weapons that they were designed to deflect against. That's why eventually armor was phased out because they were pointless um, by the what, 15th, 16th century or so when guns became more prevalent because it wasn't doing anything. Certainly, there were exception to that people would wear still wear breastplate better than nothing but you know um as far as the rules go i like the fact that like i said it has a touch ac that's where it should be that's the it, it should it requires a much less skill to use a firearm um than a bow it just does yeah. because it takes literally years to develop the muscles the strength to be a good archer whereas somebody who uses a, a gun can be trained in a lot less time and that these the the Pathfinder one uh, reflects that I think the most. What about you, John? So, oh, quickly, uh, just because I, I did want to mention this. Um, 
So early firearms, it is a standard action to load each barrel of a early firearm, a full round action to load each barrel of a two-handed early firearm, uh, three full round actions for a person to load a siege engine. Uh, you can reduce this with, um, with rapid reload. Advanced firearms is a move action for one-handed or two-handed advanced through its full capacity, and with rapid reload can be made into a free action. You cannot make it a free action for early firearms no matter what you do, and again, that makes sense. And that's what you see with uh, the crossbows are being just as easy, and they get kind of grouped up with the guns. Said so a gunslinger, they've got the crossbows in there always um, because it's a, you know it's a hand held you know bow basically shooting out bolts. Um, you point and shoot, and then you reload, and it's very similar to a gun. Um, I think the main reason they did that for Pathfinder 2 is so that if you did want to introduce the gunslinger but not introduce guns, it would still work. They would just be using hand crossbows instead of guns, and it would still work out just fine. Yeah, I mean that is a that is a different type of uh, um, motif that 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 is used in in some games. Um, I don't have too much on the Pathfinder One rules because I've never played Pathfinder One. So, uh, but you know, it sounds like the the rules are are proper. Um, let's see what they do with the the final version of the the second edition. Um, I would expect something you know very similar to the first edition since they got that right. But we'll see. They don't have a touch AC in the second edition. Yeah, though. right. Well, I mean, they messed up the alchemist with the bombs, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, Maybe we'll they modify that, homebrew that somehow. <laughs> I don't understand why they haven't fixed it, but that's that's a that's a separate issue. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously there are other editions that we could talk about, but these are just three different ones uh, that are currently that are still currently being used. Pathfinder One, obviously not as much currently being used, but I wanted to go over those because I really like the Pathfinder One gun rules, um, and it's still a full sword and sorcery setting. There are obviously other settings we could talk about where guns are much more commonplace, and therefore the guns are probably better implemented. But this is a more of the you know standard D and D where guns are not even necessarily thought of as always being a part of the system. True enough. Yes, definitely. Well, so uh, just to su just to summarize, I think pretty much we're all in agreement that based on the setting, uh, guns have their place uh, in uh, the world of. Uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Although, if it's true, sword and sorcery, John doesn't want to see any guns <laughs> at all. <laughs> that is true. Uh, and uh, yep, and uh, and I think we we're in agreement that um, uh, you know uh, the way guns work, uh, you know, between the two current systems of Pathfinder 2E and Fifth Edition, the Pathfinder 2E is the more uh, favorable system. Uh, currently out there mm. and as I, i've said i'm not really a huge fan of either one um for their their sets of rules but i because i mean the main thing you want to think of is is it better to use a gun or is it better to use a bow and in, there should be at least several circumstances where it's better to use a gun than to use a bow and if you can't think of enough of them then it's probably not a very good system mm. and in both systems, in most cases, a bow is going to be a little bit better to use, and I'm not a huge fan of that idea. However, we want to know your opinion. Um, obviously, the playtest for this is currently going. We're going to think about trying it out a little bit, but um, we can't really say for sure how the rules are going to work until the main book comes out, and that's probably not happening until, like, the summer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let us know which system you use for the guns that you think is really good. We'll take a look and compare it to Pathfinder uh, 1, where we think is the best system. That would be interesting uh, for us to see. I mean, I've, I've used a lot of systems where there's guns, uh, but uh, I want to see what uh, our viewers have to say. Remember to uh, smash the like button, subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> and uh, we will we will all talk to you guys later. Thank you. See you later. Catch you later. <laughs>